the place for comic book and anime reviews. Hey there you guys, welcome back to Rabbit Cat 12 YouTube channel. Maybe our comic book and anime reviews. And you got my review for Superman, issue number one. The right issue one again with Superman, man. man. Um, don't really love that. Don't really look like we're going back to issue one of Superman. I wish we could have just continued on the story. Um, the numbering system for it, but you know, Bennett is taking over, and we know that Bennett has a problem with continuity. Um, so it probably makes sense, and this is kind of a new era for Superman as well. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for it to um, go at number one with Bennett's own title. Um, I love this cover, it's a gorgeous cover. This actually looks a lot better, like, there's a lot of variance for this, this, this issue. The variance looks terrible, but this looks amazing. This looks gorgeous. This is a very probably should have been like this, this is amazing right here. I love this. And um, the interior artwork is by Ivan Reyes. And I and Ivan Reyes' artwork throughout this book is just gorgeous looking. Like he does some really great paneling work a lot throughout this book. Like, you know, uh, I hope I really kind of stay on this book um, for a while because um he really does, not only does he really do a good job, but also he really fits for what Bendis is going for in this book as well. Um, a lot of the other bars in the Man of Steel miniseries weren't all that great. I feel like Adam Hughes' artwork, I who art was great in the book. Uh, but the only problem with Adam Hughes' artwork, I feel like looking back at it, was the fact that Adam Hughes doesn't really fit what Bendis was going for um, in the book, like Iron Reyes. Iron Reyes just fits the book perfectly. Like it fits the tone of the book, it fits the story for the book, it fits everything about the book. Uh, and talking about Man of Steel, and I get to all my thoughts on what book that series before I get into Superman number one. I think overall I like Man of Steel. I think overall I liked it. Um, I definitely had some problems with the um, way the storyline was crafted. Um, but I love the voice business gave to Superman. Uh, it, it really felt like I was reading a Superman, but I was reading Superman a lot of times. Like, he really crafted a really great and really impactful voice for Superman. Uh, was it as good as the future of Masi run? Obviously not. That was just, that was just stunning, amazing stuff back to back with Superman. But I do think that, um, Bennett does still a pretty good job with this book. Even if it doesn't live up to what Peter J. Damasi set up. Um, for us, but let's get to Superman number one now. Um, so, the book kind of begins, you know, what Ben and Hunter loves to do. He loves to like give these like long exposition paragraphs and kind of go over things that we've already known, or he's read like the Plaid of Past series, get people up from who are just kind of, who are just jumping in on Superman number one. And um, it's, it, it's better than what he usually does. Like, it's very when we read and you read Invincible Iron Man. A lot of times during Super Patrol Story, where he had like these giant, giant paragraphs of just dialogue, just going over all the stuff that we went through already. And that was really bad. Um, this, I think, is a little bit more condensed. This is a little bit like, easier to like, read a little bit better. And it works a lot better with the book overall. And you, after we read the book, we get this like inner monologue between Superman about his family and why he's facing out against the dominator of the universe. We're just kind of there, like these villains that Superman fights at the beginning of the book. Um, they don't really add a whole lot to the rest of the story, a plot progression or anything. In fact, after the dominators are done, we get kind of a return back to uh, Superman going to his house, and you get this great panel layout. Of, you know, Superman by himself at his house and he's thinking about John and Lois. And like, he, you get these like great moments between, uh, between Lois and John and what they each mean to him. Like, like, let me just kind of read off what he kind of gives. Like, you see Superman sitting there in, in his bed by himself and Lois sits. And then he's, he's thinking about Lois and who, who in the flashback sitting next to him and Lois kind of tells him, how much do you think Lunar is worth after my expose for having given him more than thought? Because I got this nagging feeling he somehow made money off of it. <laughs> Maybe. 
The only way I ain't really going to hurt him is in the wallet. You could make fun of his ties. Of course. Thanks for backing me up with Perry today. And you just like great moments like them kissing each other in the panel. And then you flash back and you got to sit around alone again. And that that was really strong. I hope that was a really powerful sequence. We didn't get this scene of Sir Man sitting by himself in on his sofa and you think about the John who will be sitting with him and read this dialogue between him and John where he says I'm not sure. I agree, Dad. It's school, John. You have to go. But it's torture. It's actual torture. And that's if you're a regular kid. But I'm only half. And that it's somehow only half torture. Double torture. Double torture. I can fly on the entire plane and learn everything I have to learn. And it'll be better because it'll be first hand because... Kid, I love you, but you're going to school. I know. What's the real problem? Is it a girl? A girl? No, why does it have to always be about that? And you see him giving this smirk as he's just drinking his coffee. And then you cut back to your man alone. And that, that was, again, these are really powerful sequences that Bendis does in the book. And I really enjoyed that. Um, we didn't cut something I don't love as much, and you see Sam saying with the Justice League, which is cool, great artwork by Ivan Reyes, and then you see him with this little crystal, and he drops it in, and we have the, a new Fort of Solitude again. Not a big fan of that. Um, then this has made some big, big changes with the Man of Steel series. Uh, and destroying the city of Candor. It would have been great to see Sierra Man with Val for the Solitude. That would have been a great thing to kind of like explore. Um, but hey, having it be here in the Bumir Triangle, it does add an air of mystery to Fort of Solitude. I will get it that much, but it's still something I really love. It's not something I think is like. I, I really think it would have been cool if we just didn't have Porter Sato at all anymore. I think that would have been stronger. But, you know, I am fine with this, I guess. And again, the art is gorgeous for this scene. Uh, we didn't get like a uh, like Superman working the Daily Planet again without Lois being there. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very much a Bendis office space scene, like you would expect from what Bendis would do. Um. We didn't get this whole thing between Martian Man and Sierra Man, which is really interesting. Uh, and also kind of really funny, because um, we get Bunch and I have this conversation with Sierra Man, and he's being very serious, but you get this like really funny more where he keeps well, keep going, hold that thought to go and save someone, or stop a, stop a burning building, or stop a giant monster from like destroying things, and he just keeps stopping through. Um, um, Martian Manor a lot, and I remember just laughing as I was reading that. Like how funny that was. It's like I'm having like him stop each and every time while we're having this conversation. I, I kind of really enjoyed that. I really did. I thought that was really cool and really interesting. Um, and also like something he actually does have with Martian Manor in the end about like waiting about like him taking over the world pretty much and doing this kind of red sun s idea of the Sierra Man, like, or of him ruling over the people uh, as their symbol. Uh, that's very interesting to me. That's a very interesting thing for business to, like, kind of, like, pull at. This idea of Martian Man, her, like, putting Sierra Man kind of seemingly go to the dark side. And I find that just to be such an interesting take on Sierra Man. And again, the we get something I don't love as much, like I said before. Uh, this book has a lot of stuff I like in it, then it doesn't feel like it was something I don't like. And that is, Superman is in the Phantom Zone, because the entire Earth is in the Phantom Zone now, which is weird, and I guess and we're getting more Rogozar again. Which I do not like, because I don't care about Rogozar. Uh, and I really wish we weren't getting that some more. And I, I really wish that wasn't a thing that we were getting more of in this book. 
Uh, so, pretty much I'm mixed the bag with this one. Um, there's a lot of stuff I like in here. A lot of stuff I think Dennis does really, really well in this book. And, and but there's, there's a lot of them here I also don't really like. Like even the Fortress of the thing. How they were getting more Robles are. I really don't care about Robles are. I don't think anyone cares about Robles are besides Bendis. Um, he's not that interesting. I mean, just a giant doomsday creature. I thought we were done with this, and we're getting more of it right after we just had this Man of Steel series that dealt with Rogue Lazar. Can you stop getting more Rogue Lazar, please? I'm kind of sick of Rogue Lazar now. But yeah, that's Serum Number 1 from me. I know a couple of you guys about Serum Number 1. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.